Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 34. In this video, we're going to learn about comparing fractions. So the lesson objective for today is just to learn how to compare the size of two or more fractions. All right, so in order to compare the size of two or more fractions, one thing we can do is we can convert all of the fractions into equivalent fractions with the same denominator. So with this first procedure I'm going to give you, you're basically going to figure out what is the LCD or the least common denominator. You're going to transform each fraction into an equivalent fraction where the LCD is its denominator. And then you're going to compare the numerators. So given the fact that you have the same denominators, the largest numerator will belong to the largest fraction. This is one way to do it. It's the slower way, but we're gonna use it to build up the concept. As we get further along in the lesson, I'll give you the shortcut, which basically involves just cross multiplying. All right, we wanna replace the question mark with either the less than symbol or the greater than symbol. And we're gonna start with something very easy just to get an understanding of the concept. We have three eighths and then a question mark and then five eighths. So to think about this, I have a little pizza and the pizza has been split up into eight equal slices. So let's say that this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's say that we're at a party and basically I say that I'm gonna eat three slices of pizza. So let me mark these out. So I'm gonna get this piece, I'm gonna get this piece, and I'm gonna get this piece. So I've taken three eighths of the pizza, three slices out of a total of eight available. And then you say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take five out of the eight slices and just finish the pizza off. So let's say you take this one, and then this one, and this one, and this one, and then this one. Well, who got more pizza? Well, of course you did. You got five slices out of eight, whereas I only got three slices out of eight. So when we have the same denominator, it's very easy to compare. We just think about what numerator is bigger. Five is bigger than three, so we can say that five eighths is a bigger fraction. With this one, the three eighths is on the left, so we would say three eighths is less than five eighths. Of course, you could flip that around. Let me write that over here. You could say that five eighths is greater than three eighths if you were presented with the problem in a different way. Let's look at one that's a little bit more tedious. So now we have two fifths, question mark, three sevenths. So it's not as straightforward here because the denominators are not the same. So what we have to do is convert this over to where each fraction has the same denominator. Again, as we get further along the lesson, I'm going to give you a shortcut to do this very, very quickly. But right now, let's just build up the concept. So we have two fifths, and then we have three sevenths. So when we think about the least common denominator, remember, this is the least common multiple of the denominators. So of five and then seven. So this is equal to what? Well, five is a prime number and seven is a prime number. So just multiply those two together. So this is five times seven, which is 35. So basically all I have to do is multiply this by seven over seven and multiply this by five over five. And so that would give me 14 over 35. So 14 over 35. And then this would be 15. So 15 over 35. So let me actually move this over here like this and this like this so we know what we're talking about. And basically now that we have the same denominator, so this is 35 and this is 35, then I'm looking at which numerator is larger. In this case, 15 is bigger, so I'm gonna put a less than here. So 14 over 35 is less than 15 over 35. In terms of the original problem, remember two fifths is now 14 over 35. So I would say two fifths is less than Three sevenths is now 15 over 35, so we'll say three sevenths. So to answer this, we'll say two fifths is less than three sevenths. All right, let's take a look at seven over 20 and then a question mark five over 12. So let me actually write this, so seven over 20. I'm gonna leave some space and then I'm gonna write this one, five over 12. The first thing is with this method, we're gonna find the LCD, which is the least common multiple of these denominators for 20 and then 12. Let's think about 20 for a second. I don't think we need a factor tree. 20 is four times five and four is two times two. So this is two times two times five. For 12, again, I don't think we need a factor tree. It's very simple. It's four times three and four is two times two. So let's say two times two times three. Now, when you look at these prime factorizations and you're trying to build your LCM, if there's something that's common 
in this case, you have a two here and a two here, you wanna go with the largest number of repeats between any of the factorizations. So here I have two factors of two, and here I have two factors of two, so the largest number of repeats would be two. So I'm gonna put in two times two. The big mistake is everybody puts in two times two times two times two, or they put in 16 there, right? You only need four. Then here I wanna put in the five, and then I wanna put in the three. So everything goes in, so if something's common, put in the largest number of repeats between all of the prime factorizations. Okay, let me get rid of the scratch work. And you can just multiply now. So two times two is four. Four times five is 20, and 20 times three is gonna be 60. So this would be 60. To figure out what I need to multiply by, all you do is take this LCD here, which is 60, divide by the denominator. So 60 divided by 20 is three, so I need to multiply by three over three. And then over here, I divide 60 by 12 and I get five, so I need to multiply by five over five. So this is gonna end up becoming, seven times three is 21, so this would be 21 over 60. This, five times five is 25, so this would be 25, over 60. So now it's very easy, right? We have the same denominator, 60 and then 60, and I could just compare the numerators. So 21 is less than 25, so we would say 21 over 60 is less than 25 over 60. Again, to put this in terms of the original problem, that's how we wanna answer. So seven over 20 is gonna be less than five over 12. All right, let's take a look at one that's pretty tedious, especially if you're doing it the slow way. In the future, we're just going to cross multiply, so it'll be a lot quicker. But let's start out by finding the LCD, which is the LCM of these denominators. So 14 and then 34. So I would factor 14, that's two times seven. And then I would factor 34. So that is two times 17. So to build up the LCM, you would basically put one factor of two in. Again, it's common to both of these factorizations. So you just put one in, the largest number of repeats then times, you have seven, and then times 17. You can get rid of this if you want. And then basically, you can go through and crank this out. A lot of you are using calculators at this point. If you're not, just do two times seven, that's 14. 14 times 17 is gonna be 238. You can always stop and do a quick vertical multiplication. So 14 times 17. Seven times four is gonna be 28. Eight down, carry the two. Seven times one is seven, plus two is nine, so this is 98. Let's erase this and shift down. Let me actually move this up here. And then one times 14 is 14, so four and then one. Let's put some addition there. Bring down the eight, and then nine plus four is 13. Three down, carry the one. One plus one is two, so it's 238. Okay, let's get rid of this. Now, let me put this over here and say this is five over 14 times, I need to get to 238. Now notice that 14 is two times seven, so I would need to multiply by 17 to get to 238 in terms of the denominator. So I'm gonna multiply the numerator and denominator by 17. Now you could have also said, what is 238 divided by 14? And you get 17, so that's another way to do it. And this guy over here, let's do 15 over 34, and we're gonna multiply by, what do I need? Well, 34 times seven would be 238, so seven over seven. So now that we have that figured out, you can actually get rid of this if you want, you don't need it anymore. You would just do some multiplication. We know that the denominator is gonna end up being 238, in each case. So let's put that up there. What is five times 17? Well, some of you might know that that's 85. Again, if you don't, you can always stop and do a little vertical multiplication. Five times seven is 35. Five down, carry the three. Five times one is five plus three is eight. So that's 85. Okay, so the other one is gonna be 15 times seven. So 15 times seven. Seven times five is 35. Five down, carry the three. Seven times one is seven plus three is 10. So this would be 105. So if I think about the denominators, they're the same. So I just wanna compare the numerators. So 105 is larger. So this guy right here, this 85 over 238 is smaller or less than 105 over 238. So I'll go ahead and translate that into the original problem. Let me get rid of this so I have some room. And I will just say that five over 14 is less than 15 over 34. All right, let's take a look at an example where we have the same numerators, but different denominators. So we have two thirds, question mark, two fifths. So let me write this out. So two thirds and then two fifths. Let's start with the LCD method and then we'll show you a little shortcut for this one. So we have the LCD is going to be the LCM of the denominators. So three and then five. 
So because 3 and 5 are both prime numbers, we can just multiply them together. 3 times 5 would be 15. So I'd multiply this by 5 over 5, and I'd multiply this by 3 over 3. Let me get rid of this scratch work here. And so this 2 times 5 would be 10 over, we know the denominator is 15. Here, 2 times 3 is 6. We know the denominator is 15. Let me get rid of this and get rid of this. So given the fact that we have the same denominators now, we can just compare the numerators. So the larger numerator will belong to the larger fraction. So 10 is larger than 6, so we can say that 10 fifteenths is greater than 6 fifteenths, which is going to translate into 2 thirds being greater than 2 fifths. Now, we could have found that in a much quicker way. In fact, if we have the same numerators, all we have to do is look at the denominators and see which one is smaller. So whichever one is smaller belongs to the larger fraction. So I know that's a little bit tricky the first time you hear it. When you have the same numerators, you want to look at the denominators and see which one is smaller. So the smaller denominator will belong to the larger fraction. So here, 3 is smaller than 5, so 2 thirds is greater than 2 fifths. Let me make this simple and give you a visual example with some pizzas. So let's say that you go to the pizza shop and you buy two identical pizzas. You get back to the house and you split them up in different ways. With the first pizza or the one on the left, you're going to split it up into three equal pieces. So one, two, and then three. With the one on the right, you're going to split it up into five equal pieces. So one, two, three, four, five. So let's say this one's for you and this one's for a friend. So let's say you decide that you want to eat two pieces of pizza. So maybe you eat this piece right here and then this piece right here. So you've eaten two thirds of the pizza. Now, when you think about your friend, he also wants to have two pieces of pizza. So let's say he eats this piece of pizza and then this piece of pizza. Okay, so I'm going to represent that with two fifths. So who ate more pizza, given the fact that there were identical pizzas before you sliced them up? Well, you did, right? You had two thirds of the pizza and he had two fifths. In other words, your two is going to be a larger amount than his two because we're talking about the slices themselves being different, right? So your slices are larger. So when you eat two larger slices, that's going to be more than your friend who's eating two smaller slices, okay? So you're thinking about how the pizzas are split up. So that tells me that two-thirds is going to be greater than two-fifths. All right, let's take a look at two problems where we're asked to arrange from least to greatest. Once we're done with that, I'll show you the shortcut and we'll be able to move through these problems more quickly. All right, so we have 5 over 6, 11 over 12, and then 3 over 20. So we are asked to arrange these from least to greatest. Sometimes they want you to put in commas, like you see here. So put the smallest, then comma, the next smallest, then comma, you would have the largest, because here we have 3. And then sometimes they want you to use inequality symbols. So I'll just give you both ways in case you are asked for one of those on your test. So first and foremost, I would get the LCD, which is the LCM of the denominators. So 6, 12, and then 20. Okay, so this equals what? For 6, this factors into 2 times 3. For 12, this factors into 4 times 3, so 4 is 2 times 2. And then 20 is going to be 4, which is 2 times 2, and then times 5. So when I build my LCM, Again, if something is common, you want to think about the largest number of repeats. So here for 2, it occurs once here, twice here, and twice here. So the largest number of repeats is 2. So I'm putting two factors of 2 in when I build my LCM. Then I'm looking at 3. So it occurs once here and once here. So I'm putting in 1. And then I'm looking at 5. It only occurs once here. So I'm going to throw that in. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 5 is 60. So this would be 60. So I'm going to say 5 over 6 times... In order to get a denominator of 60, I need to multiply by 10. So I want times 10 over 10. And then 11 over 12. If I want a denominator of 60, I need to multiply by 5 over 5. And then 3 over 20. If I want a denominator of 60, I'm going to multiply by 3 over 3. Okay, let me get rid of this. We know that in each case, the denominator would be 60. So let me just write that in real quick. And then we'll do our multiplication. So 5 times 10 is 50. Then 11 times 5 is 55, and then 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, let me get rid of this. So thinking about how we would order this, the denominators are the same. 
So you have 60, you have 60, and you have 60. So I'm just thinking about, in terms of the smallest fraction, I would have the smallest numerator. So that would be 9, so that belongs to 9 over 60. So let's say that this is 9 over 60, and then comma. The next smallest, I'm looking for 50 here, because 50 is smaller than 55. So I would go 50 over 60. And then the largest is going to be the 55 over 60. 60. So if I want to write this in terms of what we had originally, which is always what you want to do, well, if you think about 9 over 60, again, that's going to be 3 over 20. So let's list that first. So this is 3 over 20. I'm going to put a comma. 50 over 60 is going to be 5 over 6. So this is 5 over 6. Put a comma. And then 55 over 60 is 11 over 12. So 11 over 12. So if you're asked to do this with commas in a range from least to greatest, this is how you would do it. So 3 over 20, comma, 5 over 6, comma, 11 over 12. They may ask you to arrange them from greatest to least. Sometimes they do that. So then you would put 11 over 12, comma, 5 over 6, comma, 3 over 20. A lot of times they'll also ask you to do this with inequality symbols. So generally speaking, you'll do this from least to greatest, but you can also see it from greatest to least. So I would say that this is 3 over 20 is less than 5 over 6, which is less than 11 over 12. All right, let's look at one more of these. So this one's pretty simple. We have two fifths, two thirds, two sevenths, and then one sixth. With this one, I would not find the LCD. It's gonna be a little bit faster since we have the numerators two, 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 and then a one. I can just say this is times two over two, which is gonna give me two over 12. So let me go ahead and say, I'm just gonna temporarily line this out. I'll bring it back in a moment, that this is two over 12. Okay, so given the fact that we have the same numerators now, the smallest fraction is going to have the largest denominator. Remember, if you have the same numerators, then the largest fraction is going to have the smallest denominator. So that means the smallest fraction is going to have the largest denominator. So if I think about this, the largest denominator is 12. So that means 2 over 12 or 1 over 6. Let me just bring it back. That's going to be the smallest. So let me say that this would be one over six and then comma. The next largest would be seven. So I'm gonna put two over seven and then comma. The next largest would be five. So I'm gonna put two over five and then comma. Lastly, the smallest denominator here is three. So I'm gonna use two thirds as the largest. So again, when I think about these, I've already transformed this over. Let me temporarily put this back so we can think about it. So this is two over 12. Going back to my pizza example, if I think about having two thirds of a pizza, I'm gonna eat more of that pizza than if I had two fifths of it. Here I'm eating two slices and here I'm eating two slices. But again, with the two thirds example, the slices are bigger. With the two fifths example, the slices are smaller. So that's why we would say that this one sixth here, which is two over 12, is gonna be smaller than two over seven, which is smaller than two over five, which is smaller than two thirds. So if you wanna use inequalities, We'll say one six is less than two sevenths, which is less than two fifths, which is less than two thirds. All right, so now let's get into the shortcut. So we can determine which fraction is larger by cross multiplying and comparing the results. So now we're back to replace the question mark with the less than symbol or the greater than symbol. All right, so let's start off with this example here. So we have four ninths, question mark, five twelfths. So I'm going to build you up to the shortcut. We're gonna start with what we know. So we have that the LCD is going to be the LCM of these denominators. So nine and then 12. What is nine? It's three times three. What is 12? It's three times four and four is two times two. So two times two times three. So when you build this, again, you look at this and you say, okay, well, there's gonna be two factors of two. So two factors of two but then I only need two factors of three, right? Because there's two factors of three here and one here. Go with the largest number of repeats between any of those prime factorizations. So I'm gonna put in two factors of three. Get rid of this. We know that that's basically four times nine, which is 36. So let's put this as 36. So at this point, we know using our slower procedure, we would say four over nine and then times, what do I need to multiply nine by to get to 36? Well, four. So I would do times four over four. And then over here, I have five over 12. What do I need to multiply 12 by to get to 36? Well, three, so times three over three. And so this becomes 16 over 36. 
and then this becomes 15 over 36. And now that we have a common denominator, we can just compare the numerators. So 16 is greater than 15. So you'd say 16 over 36 is greater than 15 over 36, which gives me 4 ninths is greater than 5 twelfths. Okay, so we've been doing it that way. And it's a little bit slower than what I'm going to show you now. So let me erase this and let's talk about the shortcut. In every case, you can just multiply the two denominators together to get a common denominator. It's not always going to be the least common denominator. Sometimes it will be. It just depends. But you can always just get a common denominator by doing that. So let's say I erase this and I erase this. And I just say, okay, I'm not going to find the LCD here. I'm just going to get a common denominator. So I would multiply this by 12 over 12. And I would multiply this by 9 over 9. Okay, well, 4 times 12 is 48. And then 5 times 9 is 45. It actually does not matter what the denominator is because I know it's going to be the same, right? Because I'm multiplying the two denominators together. It's just in a different order. Here it's 9 times 12 and here it's 12 times 9. Now, 9 times 12 or 12 times 9, we know that's 108. So let's just go ahead and write that for completeness. At this point, I can just compare the numerators. So 48 is larger than 45. So you would say 48 over 108 is greater than 45 over 108. Okay. So what can we learn from this process? What I could have done, let me get rid of this for a moment. I could have just said, well, if I multiply those two denominators together, they're going to be the same. So I don't really care what they are. I just need to figure out what is this numerator times the other denominator and what is this numerator times the other denominator and just compare those numbers to figure out which fraction is bigger. So in other words, I can say 4 ninths and then 5 twelfths and I can do something called cross multiplying. So take this denominator and multiply it by this numerator. 9 times 5 is 45. And that's the exact same thing we got here. 5 times 9 is going to be 45. And then you're going to take this denominator, which is 12, and multiply it by this numerator, which is 4. And that's going to give you 48. So 4 times 12 is 48 done this way. So it's just a much quicker way to obtain which fraction is bigger. I only need to think about the 48 and the 45. 48 is bigger, so I'm going to go with 4 ninths the fraction that that is next to as the bigger fraction. So I can say that 4 ninths is greater than 5 twelfths using this cross multiplying method. Okay, let's blow through a few examples. So we have 2 thirds, and then you have a question mark, and 4 fifths. So again, you're just going to cross multiply. So 3 times 4 is 12, and then 5 times 2 is 10. So 12 is greater than 10. So you can say that 2 thirds is smaller, right? So 2 thirds is less than 4 fifths. What about four thirds question mark six fifths? So don't worry about the fact that you have improper fractions here. It's not going to matter. You can use the same strategy. So let me write four thirds and then six fifths. And again, we're just going to cross multiply. Three times six is 18. Then five times four is 20. So 20 is bigger. So you would say four thirds is greater than six fifths. Let me give you one example with some negatives. So these are a bit tricky because everything I said is going to now be reversed when you're thinking about a negative. So when I think about negative three fourths and two over negative seven, the first thing you want to do if you have negatives involved, bring your negative here into the numerator. And that's legal because a negative divided by a positive or a positive divided by a negative is a negative. I could just as well put the negative out in front or I could put the negative in the numerator or the denominator. It's all legal. So let me put them both in the numerator. And then I would cross multiply. So 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. Okay, so here's where we got to be really, really careful. When we think about a bigger negative, it is further to the left and it is therefore a smaller number. So negative 21 is a bigger negative and therefore a smaller number than negative 8. So negative 21 would be next to the smaller fraction. So you would say that negative 3 fourths is less than negative two sevenths. If you had gotten the problem three fourths and then two sevenths, notice that the answer would be flipped. So you cross multiply here, you have eight and then you have 21, right? So 21 is greater than eight. So here you would say that three fourths is greater than two sevenths. But because these guys are negative, it's going to get reversed, right? Because now three-fourths becomes negative three-fourths, and that's going to be a bigger negative and therefore a smaller number than this negative two-sevenths. All right, let's look at one more example where we arrange from least to greatest. So we have two-fifteenths, three-sevenths, and four-thirteenths. So what I do is just start with any two that you want. It doesn't really matter. 
So let's start with two fifteenths and then three sevenths and just figure out the relationship. So 15 times three is 45 and then seven times two is gonna be 14. So this one is obviously smaller. So we'll say two fifteenths is less than three sevenths. Okay, so erase this. And now you can take this one right here, this three sevenths and compare it to four thirteenths. So I'm gonna say three sevenths and then four thirteenths. You'll cross multiply. So seven times four is 28. And then 13 times three is 39. So three sevenths is bigger. So I'm gonna say that three sevenths is greater than four thirteenths. So we know that two fifteenths is less than three sevenths. We could also turn that around and say three sevenths is greater than two fifteenths. Here we see that three sevenths is also greater than four thirteenths. So I know that three sevenths is actually the biggest number. I only now need to compare these two numbers and see which one is larger. So let's slide this down a little bit and cross multiply. So 15 times four is 60, and then 13 times two is 26. You can say that two fifteenths is going to be less than four thirteenths. So this would be the smallest number. So let me change my color here. So this is two fifteenths. I'll put a comma. This one would be in the middle. So it'd be four thirteenths. And then the largest would be this three sevenths. If you wanna write this using inequality symbols, you would typically go from least to greatest in the order of the number line, but you could reverse that if you want. It's pretty much up to you. In most cases, you're gonna see 2 fifteenths is less than 4 thirteenths, which is less than 3 sevenths, 